Okay guys, this is one for the Land Rover lovers, my uh, subscribers that enjoy the Land Rover Defender. Now I was asked to give my opinion on the Ineos Grenadier. And at this point, I don't really think I'm qualified to, to give any sort of opinion on a vehicle that is, is still essentially a concept vehicle. It's not in production and it's uh, not rolling through workshops. So uh, as a commercial vehicle technician, it's, um, it's a bit of an odd thing really, because I'm looking at it uh, as, a, as a Defender type of copy, which is a, as an SUV at the moment, or a, a pickup truck cab and that's it which to me is like okay that's a uh, defender copy yeah uh, like a santana or something like that it's just uh, had some engineers tweak things to make it a lot better yeah we are on a hype train at the moment and it's very very clever the way this marketing has been done it's good because they have you emotionally invested already if you look at Facebook, it's starting to grow, the conversations are starting to grow via social media. And this is the way that things are sold because people become very, very emotionally invested in something. This is how we go out and buy stuff, don't we? Putting the feelings aside and the excitement that it could be something really good, you have to be more subjective about how you look at this and see what they're really offering and what they're saying. Now, I'm a commercial vehicle technician, which means I'm used to commercial vehicle operations and uh, repairs, stuff like that, yeah. So things that come into our workshop that we work on, uh, they have a commonality and mainly they uh, want to be run on a budget. They're not expensive and they have engines which are produced by uh, people like Iveco or uh, Packard or Cummings and stuff like that, yeah. So when you have a, uh, a new vehicle, which is a copy of the Defender, which has a larger engine, which is BMW, I'm already hearing price tag raising. This is not uh, accessibility to people who are running commercial vehicles and vehicles that are used for platforms for um, industrial work, you know, like uh, uh, cherry pickers and high lifts and stuff like that, or military vehicles. What they're doing is that they're adding already performance to the price tag and this is just the way I see it. They could have so easily put an Iveco engine, an Iveco Tector engine even, which has got a lot of power, is reliable and fairly cheap as well. And just as an example, or I don't, don't quote me on this because there's plenty of different uh, Iveco powertrains about, they're very reliable. And this is what a commercial vehicle operator would, would look for. Okay, so it's not really directed at them. It's directed at people uh, to get around the uh, emissions laws and the tax and that by calling it a commercial vehicle, which means you're gonna have to pay VAT on it. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that is pushing the, that is a pushy price tag, just put it that way. It's um, uh, prohibitive for somebody like me. I mean, it's been suggested like 45,000 pounds for one of those vehicles. You're buying into a concept and into a club, aren't you? Now, um, LDV, a long time ago, they brought out uh, another vehicle, which was the uh, Maxus, yeah, which superseded the Convoy, if you remember those. The Convoy was a rugged Spartan vehicle, and it was a little bit dated. Now, the mistake they made is they brought out a new vehicle, and everybody hated it, and they still hate it for some reason. It seems to, to hold a, a bad name, even though, with the, the Chinese improvements. They're not bad vehicles. I've driven them, I've serviced them, I've worked on them. They're not bad, they're not bad at all. Uh, however, Land Rover Defender has a good name. This is a Land Rover Defender copy. So it's already got that element of, of icon status where people are gonna go, yeah, I actually, yeah, it looks like Defender, yeah, but it's probably all right. Um, I like the way they did it for getting people's opinions on uh, what they think it should be. And it's got people involved straight away, yeah, emotionally invested again. However, I have my doubts about Land Rover Defender owners buying something of that price tag that seems out of their range. You're a Land Rover Defender owner, a discovery owner, you, uh, you've bought a vehicle, and you know it's faults, so you do the repairs on it, you keep it going, don't you? How often do you buy something of, of a price tag that's 40 grand? You, you don't generally do that, do you? 
so it's not really aimed at those people but it's it's, it's like a, a a platform and a pedestal to step themselves up there to provide something that is actually good for the market which which is good okay if i won the lottery I probably would have a dabble with it and uh, have a go with it so uh, yeah i just I, it's really hard to, to say when you can you can see behind what's going on here is that they are getting you used to it first of all so you you've already got it in your mind yeah you like the shape boom it's there it's like god i'd love to have one of those emotionally invested uh, mentally connected yeah so it's sold to you already however because they said it was going to be built in bridgeport in wales news this week is that they may not be building it in britain and this suddenly is a little bit of a controversy isn't it because it was supposed to be a, a british built vehicle you know a, an update from the defender and they could be building it in bmw's old plant in france which doesn't make it british built does it and then suddenly it takes the concept of the land rover defender out of the way it's not british built yeah all vehicles had the parts manufactured abroad, whichever way you look at it, they don't make bits in the same country, in the same factory anymore like they used to do. It's all bought off the shelf, pick and pack, sent off and then assembled. So the assembly would have been in the UK. Maybe it still will be. Maybe it still will be. And if it is, well, that makes it interesting for the people in Bridgeport. There's something like 500 jobs that are going to be created out of this if it comes off. Yeah. It could be a rich man's folly, somebody who's had a brilliant idea and he's thought, yeah, let's do this and then chuck loads of money at it. But I doubt it very much because marketing and research and uh, seeing where things are sold in the world on a global stage, then they have to actually make the, the figures meet, don't they? They have to make the figures meet. And I think it is quite impressive what I've seen so far the engineering that's gone into it and the thought that's gone into it, I mean, four-link suspension. Yeah, nice one. That's a good move. Oh, I don't know what the transmission's going to be. I mean, that's a bugbear for, that was the bugbear for the Defender. And it is for quite a few vehicles, actually. When, uh, when you have manual transmissions that, that tend to fall bits because the transfer box isn't strong enough, yeah, you do have problems. But I'm sure, I'm sure that they've, they've worked this out. Hopefully, if you know what the larder's like, you have a, a, an H-box um, and then you have a transfer box which is separate, that works out better. The same as the MAN 4x4s, yeah, that means you can take the transfer box, replace it quickly and you have a prop shaft in between. Brilliant, but I don't know, I don't know because they haven't told you yet. So it, you're being drip, drip fed and uh, it's exciting it, for, from an engineering point of view. And vehicle manage, manufacturing point of view is, is really interesting to, to watch how they're getting from point A, which is the idea of talking around a pub table, um, or the Grenadier, I think that the pub was called, so they named the vehicle after that. Sitting there, it's the idea, first of all, and then actually making it happen step by step by step. And they're taking you through this. A lot of vehicle manufacturers don't do that. They don't get you to invest that much. Generally, what they do is a, a, a scatter uh, type of advertising that you, they've got a new car come out and they'll have all people doing reviews and shit like that. And then people will want to watch the reviews to see if the car's any good and then maybe go out and buy it. Whereas this one is already generating a lot of interest on the internet, which is good because it's, it's like an idea that grows and grows and grows. As I said, it's emotional investment and people are buying into it already. Okay. So I don't know what your thoughts are about this, this vehicle. Um, I know it looks like a Defender. I don't like the front bonnet at all. It looks fucking ugly and roundy. But generally, but generally, yeah, good idea. Why not? As I say, I'll probably have a flutter with one. I would like to get my hands on one and take it to bits and see exactly what's involved with it. But it's out of my range. It's not being marketed to, to uh, Uggs like myself and the Defender owner that is looking to upgrade because they don't upgrade. They buy the vehicle and they spend thousands on putting galvanized chassis on and reconditioning everything so it will last. So why would the guy go out and buy a new one like that? Yeah, Range Rovers and the, and the new Defender, well, fuck. I don't know what to think of that. It's, it's, it's a completely different concept for a different market altogether, yeah? This Grenadier, if they're going to make it successful as a sturdy 4x4, then they are going to have to 
like they say, uh, being a commercial vehicle, do what Land Rover Defender did, which was a multi-use uh, platform. Yeah, well, it's got a ladder, shame, uh, ladder frame chassis, so there's a possibility there. That's the engineering advantage of that, that you can put something on the back of it, turn it into a tipper truck if you like, or put a, a, a gun turret on it, yeah, and uh, take out some jihadis or uh, cherry uh, picker or, or anything like that yeah so there is a lot of potential in that vehicle and i hope that's what they're aiming for at the end of the day once they're in production and the price comes down a little bit and they, they <laughs> they've sorted everything out and the people who have got the money will buy it for a novelty first of all and let's hope that it comes to be used as a proper utility for before commercial vehicle because that's what the Defender was yeah interesting all round and I'm gonna keep up with this watch the videos and watch people's opinions and, and I quite I quite like what some people are saying yeah so uh, if you have any comments about this bung it below this video and uh, we'll have a uh, see what other people think about it Facebook is is lit up a little bit about it and people are getting annoyed that it's uh, the possibilities it's not being made in Britain because then suddenly it's, that's a controversy isn't it I wouldn't be surprised if they push it to the limit everybody gets disappointed then there'll be a little bit of joy when suddenly they say no actually we're going to be building it in Britain because we're all Brexiteers and we support Great Britain yeah wait and see wait and see this this actually brings the emotional level just up that little bit more you, do you know what I'm saying you're investing it in more because it's made in Britain yeah, yeah so uh, yeah I personally got a buzz out of watching the, the engineering videos I mean I was hyped I'm like yeah I'd like that but your heart shouldn't roll, rule your wallet your head should be thinking first to think well is it actually for me or not I don't need a 4x4 at the moment I'd like one but I don't need one because I'm driving to, to work and I'm doing really horrendous miles every year. So all I need is a, is a small runabout car. But as a folly for play and for utility, I would, yeah, I'd definitely just consider it. It's better than having a Land Rover Defender that you have on your driveway having to fix all the fucking time. Isn't it, guys? Yeah. Anyway, see you later. Hope you enjoyed the video. And now I'm off. I mean, my opinion doesn't count for fuck all, really. But somebody wanted to know so I've said yeah so anyway see you later bye